Apple literally just took its own pro computer line out to the back of the barn and completely killed it. Like, don't even care. What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we are talking about a surprisingly exciting Apple keynote, especially considering that it starts out with iPhone SE, right? And we're gonna get into all the details here, so be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and let's get started. All right, so first up, not a lot of special things happen. It was kind of a slow ride throughout this keynote, right? We get into new iPhone 13 colors. We have green available now with like a regular green for the 13 and Alpine green for the iPhone 13 Pro. Not a lot of special stuff happening there, but then we move into the iPhone SE. SE, which I'm sure all of you are very excited about. And there's not a lot of crazy stuff happening here. I mean, we have the A15 Bionic chip that's new to the iPhone SE, obviously. You got a fingerprint scanner, as we've noticed before. Uh, some of the big selling points here are that we have better battery life, we have a 12 megapixel camera, and if you wanted it, there's 5G now on the iPhone SE, so there you go. Essentially, we have the same design here. There are three new colors, Midnight, Starlight, and Product Red. It starts at $429. It's available to pre-order this Friday and ships on March 18th. So coming up next, we have iPad Air. And I know everybody's super excited about iPad Air, right? Well, okay, we'll get through this really quickly because there's a lot of really fun stuff to talk about in a second here. But iPad Air now has the M1 chip in it. I like this, but it's still an iPad Air. It's still an iPad, right? Like give me, as a creator, give me Final Cut Pro on an iPad and I will be so happy. But aside from that, I mean, iPad Air, it does have a 12 megapixel front-facing camera bump. Um, the M1 chip is nothing to like gloss over. I mean, this is a super fast chip. Like we have amazing performance inside of these iPads now, but again, it's still an iPad. On top of that, there are some colors here. We have space gray, starlight, pink, purple, and blue. So you can, you know, pick up one of those. It's available for pre-order on Friday, ships on March 18th. I mean, it's an iPad Air. They look pretty cool. I They work with Apple Pencil in case that's something that's important to you. And they start at $599. And I believe that's for the 64 gigabyte model, which seems to be a little low for an iPad, right? Like for somebody to create on 64 gigabytes is not much. But that being said, let's move on to some of the fun stuff. So now we are talking about the Mac, and well, more specifically, the M1 chip, the Apple Silicon chip. Apple just, how do I put this? They just absolutely destroyed <laughs> Intel and AMD and everybody else. Uh, we have the M1 Ultra. Yes, Ultra is the, what comes after Max. So uh, does that mean we get an iPhone Ultra at some point? I don't know, but the M1 Ultra is absolutely ridiculous. With this thing, we have an Ultra Fusion architecture. There's 2.5 terabytes of low latency interprocessor bandwidth, 114 billion transistors. It's a large multi-die architecture. We have 128 gigabytes of unified memory as well. And so get this, the M1 Ultra is a 20 core CPU in total. We have 16 high performance cores and four high efficiency cores. And there's a 64 core GPU. Now, this is crazy because the speed and performance that this chip is offering, um, <laughs> like I said, this chip kills the Mac Pro, like legitimately. It's actually eight times faster than the M1 chip. And essentially this thing is two M1 Max chips, like, put together, like it's, it is long. And <laughs> I just, I, that kind of sounds funny. It's a very long chip, everybody. <laughs> but really here, we have less power usage and more performance. I mean, all around, this thing absolutely murders across the board. And well, what are they putting this in? I'm glad you asked. We have this going inside of the Mac Studio. And essentially, this is this package is what murders the Mac Pro and essentially any other 16 core PC on the market. So the Mac Studio is 7.7 .7 inches square, 3.7 inches in height. Oh, and get this, we even have an SD card slot on the front along with two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. On the back, we have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, a 10 gigabit ethernet port, two USB-A ports, HDMI, a pro audio jack, and this thing can support up to four XDR displays. So this little machine right here, it's its kind of like a double Mac mini. I don't know, it's its its smaller kind of than that, but it is, 
<laughs> this is actually funny. It's 60% faster than a 28 core Xeon Mac Pro. Like, what? I mean, essentially, like I said, this little machine here, for now, murders the Mac Pro line. Um, but it's going to cost you, right? And so everything that I mentioned here, all the specs, pertain to the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip in it. There is a Mac Studio with the M1 Max in it as well. That actually starts at $2,000. The M1 Ultra starts at, the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra starts at $3,999. Pretty, pretty penny for the performance, but it's, I feel like it's still, like that's still really cheap for the amount of Mac Pro and PC killing performance that you're getting inside of this tiny little machine. Now we also, to complement that, well, you can get an XDR display obviously, but we have the Mac Studio display or the Studio display. This thing has a 27 inch screen. It's essentially a 5K retina display, uh, 218 PPI, 600 nits of brightness. And inside of it, it actually has an A13 Bionic chip and it uses that for its audio and video features. There is a 12 megapixel uh, ultra wide camera built into the display and we have six speakers built into it as well. Now, how good those speakers are going to be we don't know yet, but it's still impressive nonetheless. There's also three USB Type-C ports here and one Thunderbolt 4 port, and that one Thunderbolt cable that you can branch off of that can actually give you up to 96 watts of power, and you can also power three studio displays off of one MacBook Pro. So like I said, we have the Mac Studio that starts at $2,000, that's with the M1 Max. We have the um, M1 Ultra in the Mac Studio for $4,000 essentially, and then we have the Studio Display, which starts at $1,500, and there are configurable options. I believe it, it doesn't come with a stand by default, so you have to add either um, the tilt and height adjustable stand, the regular stand, or the vase amount stand, whichever one is your preference, and the price will probably go up from there. And there's also like uh, the nano coating that will help the reflections and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, the important thing to talk about here is that M1 Ultra chip and just how Apple is absolutely demolishing the performance game when it comes to their own silicon in, in, in comparison to Intel, in comparison to AMD, like, I feel like everybody was shaking in their boots back when the uh, M1 chip was first released and announced, and now it's just like, are you guys even okay? <laughs> like, are you, Intel, are you okay? Please let me know that you're okay. I would love to know, um, but, that being said, I mean, I don't know if I'll personally be picking up an M1 Ultra uh, computer, like a, the Mac Studio. I use an iMac Pro currently for like all of my like audio production, music production, and video stuff. But I think that there's something to be said about that level of performance. I, I never have any problems on my iMac Pro. Like it, it works fine. But if you're doing anything high level, it seems like the Mac Studio is definitely the way to go over a Mac Pro, like why would you do that? I don't know, I wanna know your thoughts though down in the comment section below and I hope you enjoyed this recap of Apple's crazy M1 Ultra event, plus Ultra everyone, plus Ultra. <laughs> Just, I don't know, it's pretty wild. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell because I post new videos and if you do that, sometimes YouTube will let you know that I have done such things in, in the future, maybe. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts though. I really appreciate all the support everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, this is Dom and I will catch you in the next video.